میخور که به زیر گل بسی خواهی خوفت بیمونس و بی رفیق و بی همدم و جفت زنهار به کس مگو تو این راز نهفت هر لاله که پجمرد نخواهد بشه As far as wine is concerned, in my opinion, Khayyam uses it to symbolize the wisdom that one ought to acquire to live in the presence. What wine does is, to, is uh, that it brings forgetfulness. One forgets about the past and the future and allows the person to live uh, in the presence. And so the kind of wisdom that Khayyam wants us to acquire is one uh, that enables us to dispense with the worries of the past and the future and live in the presence. This is not the wine that intoxicates a person. This is the wine of wisdom. From a literary, purely theoretical literary point of view, uh, a signifier uh, such as sharab, wine, can have a multiple meaning. I, for one, have absolutely no doubt that when Khayyam says sharab, he means this sharab, that like shiraz, that we drink and we get a little bit uh, tipsy and uh, etc. But does it also have a different meaning, uh, a metaphoric meaning or something else? That's perfectly also plausible. One, if there is any lesson one has to learn from Omar Khayyam, is not to be dogmatic about anything, including to be dogmatic about that, no, this is only metaphoric and, uh, and as a practicing Muslim, Omar Khayyam never touched the wine. This is as absurd and fanatical as saying no this is all physical wine and it doesn't mean anything else theoretically it doesn't make sense it could be any number of things but uh, my personal view and uh, make a distinction between a literary theoretical uh, perspective that it can have a multiplicity of meaning and what the, my grasp my take on Khayyam that is no he means physical beauty he means physical wine and his fascination with uh, with uh, physical beauty and with uh, wine that makes you tipsy and, and such uh, is uh, is real, is tangible, is physical and is compatible with his conception of, uh, of life. Now, it doesn't mean that even if by this wine, by this sharab, means physical, the, the wine that you drink and get tipsy, that cannot, that the state of uh, drunkenness cannot create a a level of consciousness in which certain realities can be grasped that ordinarily we, we don't have a, a grasp of them. Uh, so one has to be a more liberal-minded and allow for a multiplicity of, uh, of readings and without readily dismissing any one of them. In Kuzhe Choman Aashiq Zari در بند سر زلف نگاری بود است این دسته که برگردن او میبینی دستی است که برگردن یار بود است The third concept which is uh, used in the Rubaiyat is that of a pot, a kuzi in Persian and as we all know pots fall, they break, they uh, disintegrate and so comes the concept of impermanence and death, which is so central in the Rubaiyat. Uh, Khayyam, like a great sage, reminds us that we are temporary, that life uh, is in a state of influx, that we come and go. And just like a pot that holds water for a few days, we too hold our soul for a few days and then it falls, it dies, and it withers away. Khayyam also is known by uh, many to have uh, had antinomian and uh, anti-religious tendencies. Um, what is important to realize is that Omar Khayyam, who by all account himself was a rather pious man, nevertheless was vehemently against religious hypocrisy and that is exactly what distinguishes Omar Khayyam from so many other thinkers who have tried to tell us 
what the right path is. Khayyam acknowledges in utmost humility that neither he knows the truth nor you and I. What most is appealing to us today when we look back at Iranian and Islamic intellectual history is everything we read is one particular philosopher or school of philosophy or jurisprudence or theology. They know they have seen the truth and they are now going to tell it to us. Whereas in uh, Omar Khayyam, we have no indication that the man has seen the truth or knows the truth. Not only that, he in fact thrives at not knowing the truth and not knowing what, what, what in the world are we doing here. I don't think Khayyam is rejecting or embracing any overall universal notion of religion. Of course, if a man of his renown were found out to have been the author of blasphemous poetry, he would be in trouble. There's no denying that. Oftentimes, poets who were known to have written penned certain lines that did not, uh, did not adhere to religious belief, the general principles of Islam in Islamic societies, or who seemed to question too probingly the basis of religion, would be summoned before the, the clergy, who were at that time the judges of, of, of the community as well, and would be severely punished.